Well, um, what an amazing day. Um, I said this morning that this conference was timely and of great importance and presented an opportunity to hear from a range of contributors sharing their work and ideas about routes to a low carbon economy and in particular tackling the energy transition and we really have not been disappointed. And I think if you could all join with me again in a round of applause for the amazing uh, contributions we've had. And I, I don't know about you, I'm glad everything's been filmed because uh, I think there's been so much richness to go back and look at some of these uh, contributions that we've heard from. I've been merrily scribbling notes during the day as well. Um, if, I, if I think back about the, the range of speakers we've had and our opening speakers from um, Elborg University, the holistic approach is something I really took from that, that opportunity to think about combining uh, heat and power. Uh, the district heating model and what an impact it's had. Uh, these are really, really important things, I think, for us as an island to recognise now and learn about as we embark on our journey. Um, I also think about the points made about engaging the consumer in all of this, and a couple of people have touched on that in the, in the panel session just now, about how do we bring everyone with us. But the consumer was talked about in terms of convenience and cost, and the other thing I liked was the gamification. And uh, perhaps the Energy and Sustainability Centre's cards could become part of the, the gamification of this on the Isle of Man. Um, huge thanks as well to Professor Curran for his contribution today. I know that uh, Ralph and I and, and many others, uh, Daphne and Paul and, and a lot of people in the Isle of Man have had the privilege of working with Professor Curran. And one of the themes that I've heard a little bit from contributions today is you know, wh why don't these things happen? What can government do? Can't we be quicker? Can't we get on with things? I have to tell you, when Professor Curran came to the Isle of Man in 2019 and assembled the analytical team to produce his impact report, there was an immense amount of work done very quickly and with great effect. And so it can be done. And that's what I hold on to. The commitment is there. We can do this. We have to mobilise ourselves to deliver. Um, I really appreciated his contribution again today about the importance of nature in all this, that we don't forget that we face a climate emergency and a nature emergency. But again, how can we harness nature-based solutions to make a difference as we go on our journey to net zero? Um, I think the other two powerful things I always take from Professor Curran is optimism, vision, co-benefits. With everything that we are doing, yes, there will be investment, but there are co-benefits for us in so many ways, and we have to grasp those opportunities. Um, Simon, after lunch, your message worked. I got it. You said it three times. Relevance. Relevance. And so, yes, we face a climate emergency, and that in and of itself, as far as I'm concerned, is a reason to act. But there is no doubt that we are losing business and we will lose business and we will not have a sustainable, optimistic, future-proofed island if we do not act. This is non-negotiable. I am delighted that last week Tinwald approved in an interim target of 35% reduction in emissions by 2030. It is nowhere near on the scale of the Faroes, I recognise that, but it's, it was important for us. And that we have an approved climate action plan. I'm also pleased that we have a draft economic strategy that we can bring forward and critically now we must combine what we're doing to deliver. Um, I think Simon talked about the opportunities in the green economy and, and the question came uh, earlier on about how we bring the whole island and, and develop all the opportunities here and I think we do have opportunities but underpinning it all is our transition to green renewable energy. It is a no-brainer, we must do it. Um, I think what we should also take, though, is inspiration from the wonderful presentation from the Faroe Islands. I think the journey that they are on, that they've started and that they're on, and the roadmap, absolutely fascinating and inspirational. And I think the work that the Energy and Sustainability Centre are doing, not only by bringing this conference together, but again by working in partnership with Manx Utilities to gather in the data about what's happening here and then to model what our transition could potentially involve, this should give us the, uh, the, the hope and the, the positivity that, again, this can be done. 
We just need to understand our options and we need to move. Um, so for me, the takeaways from today are that absolutely we have to have a focus on this and I believe we do. We have political will and commitment. We have Tinwald commitment as well as government commitment. Government's role is to enable, and I think the point was made earlier that government has to understand, I think it was Dave Quirk made the point, all of you in the room, businesses, academics, people who know what is needed, we need to understand what needs to happen from a legislative, a regulatory, what are the things that government needs to shift or change. Once we understand that though, the ability to move quickly is what matters. We heard about the fact that things can be done but what we should be doing is getting ourselves to a position where once we know those no regrets decisions to deliver, we are able to facilitate those. So for me, it's about the importance of collaboration. It's about the importance of recognising the opportunity is absolutely now. The investment time is now. And it's also about delivery, programme management and effective delivery. Thank you so much again for the amazing conference today. I think the workshops coming up will be really, really worthwhile. And can you all join with me again in showing appreciation for a great inspirational day?